Hi, very good morning to you. It's Gene from Star Observatory. We're just going to have a quick look at some data one of our superstars has sent us, Kendall from Canada. Um, he sent it a day earlier because he's going on vacation, but he wanted to make sure we got this data and we've also got the muons to add on to Earth Alpha at a glance tomorrow. Um, big thanks to, special thanks to John and a few others of you that have been supporting the observatory uh, over the last couple of days. Um, you know, this enables us to keep doing what we do and that's it in a nutshell. Um, I wanted to have a look with you guys at Earth Alpha at a glance and just go over a couple of things there because I don't think people are quite understanding what the purpose of Earth Alpha at a glance is and how, how much we can get from it. It doesn't cover everything else uh, which we'll explain in a minute but I will say this, uh, yesterday uh, Universal Light Message had a successful launch, you'll be seeing their um, special location where they launched from uh, in a couple of days or a day or so on their YouTube channel so if you want to go over there um, I understand there's been a few of the people book a launch as well for the next slot so you know uh, stay tuned because I think that they're going to be taking it to different locations every time they do a launch and try and make it that little bit more special for you guys um, but those messages right now are traveling out into deep space within another few hours they will go past Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 in terms of distance they aren't you know racing up behind them but they are you know going out there as we speak and they'll be doing that for the next million odd so years so it's not just a message out into space it's a legacy and a lot a lot of other things as well it's a real special thing enabling the public to have the freedom to you know communicate off Earth, and we live now in a day and age where that's possible. You'll also see, um, you know, the equipment that I built for them in their launches and videos that they put up on YouTube. Um, like I say, a lot of work went into that, a few hundred hours, uh, not just in the, my work in the actual building of laser, but Carol and Ian uh, spent a lot of time making sure that the website was very easy, friendly for you guys to use, so that the whole experience would be you know that of simplicity and that's what it should be like really okay so as you can see looking at the data from Canada there's been a slight decrease uh, midway through the month of about one micro Tesla exactly what we would expect to see but we see this um, regularly and at the moment no real cause for concern with regards to what is going on other than what we know that has been happening over the last decade in Canada and that is an intensity reduction and we know what's happening as a result of that. Poles are migrating a little bit quicker over the last three months by a round average of 20% and increasing over in Russia right now and that is why the magnetic north dipole, that thing that your compass points to, is actually racing over towards Canada as we speak and has been doing so constantly now for a hundred years going up a little bit of speed covering more distance closer to, as we get to today's present time so uh, since the 90s just to put it in perspective since 1990 it has done over 1200 miles in distance of migration compared to the 90 years before that where it only done 500 or so miles so you know things are as time gets you know close to the present day starting to pick up and we will see what happens when we get to that 40 degree mark just want to quickly go over to earth alpha at a glance because i want to talk about the importance of what we do there we're going to be doing another update to that uh, so tune in tomorrow for that and um, let's just have a quick look at what we actually deliver uh, in regards to uh, the information as a tool. So very very quickly um, we can see at a quick glance that's what the whole idea of this is is that you get an idea of what's going on just by a quick glance and then if you want to you can go into the archive and we're getting some data now in the archive so you can make some comparisons you can take the data out of this put it in Excel do a chart and you know the visual charts give you more idea and indication of what's going on over a time period what we try and do is cover the basics like atmospheric oxygen, atmospheric CO2, um, you know, the longitude and latitude of the last 
pinpointed magnetic north pole position that we do on the 17th of every month so we'll be updating this one tomorrow radiation background volcanoes that are currently in eruption uh, the latest earthquake within the last 24 hours and we only record the largest uh, magnitude of those and then we've got muons per square meter per hour in the UK and also in Canada and soon we're going to be adding Perth Australia's one to this as well so you get an idea of three different locations around the world and what's going on with you know cosmic rays and the interaction uh, in our upper atmosphere that smashes these cosmic rays into small elementary particles like muons. Um, you can see we also cover sunspot numbers, the geomagnetic field and solar x-rays with relationship to that and we give you an overview of the jet streams and also you can see the lists of where we've got magnetometers around the world and then last of all the overall magnetosphere strength of the earth based on a mean average of those magnetometers that we've got. What we don't cover is things like other things that are going on in the world like economics because you can find on YouTube much better people to talk about economics to you. Um, we do know that there is food shortages coming as a result of the climate change and I'll just say this straight off, the climate isn't changing because of CO2. This is just some scam that the governments around the world and you know Davos, the Economic Forum and all those are using to stealth tax people. It's clear you know that CO2 isn't of concern. The amount especially that CO2 of man puts into the uh, atmosphere is of no concern. We are closer to killing the planet than we are closer to saturating it to um, an environmental level where plants will thrive. What I'm talking about, I'm talking about industrial uh, growers that use greenhouses pump artificially CO2 into the greenhouse to get it up to around about 12 to 1500 parts per million for optimum performance, optimum growing performance. So when you compare the fact that we're at 420, or like we was the last time we done the Earth Alpha at a glance, 438 parts per million, we are closer to killing this planet because if it went down to levels at 200 parts per million we would shut down the biodiversity growth on the planet and that is definitely not what we want to do at this point in time when we are struggling because of other climatic changes to grow food for the 8 billion people that are on this earth right now we are closer to killing off the biodiversity and therefore killing ourselves than we are close to making it optimum performance levels so <coughs> the other things that of concern obviously is the economy uh, you know jobs for people because we're all stuck in this stupid system that is outdated called the capital system and therefore we have only a few ways of obtaining money one steal it not many of us want to do that because we like our freedoms we don't want to be spending the rest of our lives in jail the other way is work for it and then there's one other way and that is benefits now, salaries aren't going up, benefits have been cut globally. You know, if we just look at what happened in America during this last year of COVID-19, over 80 million people claimed food and um, benefit assistance. Same case over here in the UK, people have lost their jobs. It's, it's a terrible, terrible situation that has came out of it. And on top of that, um, you know, people's health have been slapped as well as a result, especially those that have lost their lives through, you know, catching this. You know, we could go into the politics of whether COVID-19 is real or not, and, you know, whether the vaccines are a help or not, but that really isn't what we do here at this, unit, at this um, observatory. What we do is focus on the natural anomalies and, you know, give you an idea of and some, some security you know, to let you guys know that if there is a concern, you know, we will definitely talk about it. But, you know, more so you can see when you come onto Earth Alpha at a glance every week when we do them and just get an idea of what's going on with your Earth. And that, that really is of importance, I think. And we should all be more concerned about what's going on. And I think we should also have the debate more often about what is being done with CO2 as opposed to what is not being done 
about this magnetic pole reversal that we're in right now because you know they have put all their eggs in a basket that doesn't really matter unless we start driving the levels down lower than what they are right now because sooner or later this earth is going to go through a magnetosphere uh, change when it goes through its pole reversal and that is something that we have completely and utterly not prepared for they have done all this work with co2 and yet they have done nothing or very little with regards to the magnetic pole reversal can you believe that guys you can't compare the two if we lose the magnetosphere on this planet it's dead regardless of how much co2 is in the atmosphere it will die because that is one of the only things that keep our planet and our biodiversity on this planet alive so you can't you can't even compare the two one looks like a mosquito and the other one looks like a whale so just wanted to really uh, reinforce the importance of what we do here with the earth out for a glance it's about you know keeping you informed not being an alarmist to any of these things that are happening around the world but you know at the same time sending a clear message over to whoever listens to these videos and supports this observatory that things aren't perfect in our world and these anomalies change every day and if you're caught up in the vicinity of one of these anomalies that are changing then it's not going to be a very nice journey for you you know people lose their lives when volcanoes erupt people lose their lives when earthquakes happen and people may lose their lives when this earth goes through a magnetic pole shift and if it doesn't recover the magnetosphere and i've been through this lots of times if it doesn't recover then that will be the end of the biodiversity on this planet there isn't an, a, a scientist from nasa the european space agency or any other uh, well-known organization or agency that will say any different to that so with that guys i'll be back tomorrow with the earth alpha the, a glance all the data will be updated and recent for you and you'll be able to make comparisons and see what's going on with the anomalies around the world you know there's nothing we can do until people have had enough with regards to all the other things like the economy and you know the, the lack of attention to you know really important issues of science and other matters around the world and it'll only be when we have all had enough that we'll actually want to do something about it just like what happened to Colonel Gaddafi in the streets when the people had had enough of his brutal reign on them so it, well, it is not all lost guys there is hope we've just got to get to that point in time where we say look we've had enough and I'm sure we will do something about it at that point until then guys there's a link down there if you want to help support what we do at the observatory I hope you feel that it's worth supporting big thanks again to John and a few others that supported it and um uh, the only other thing to do is say what I usually do. Link down there in the description and as always, bye for now.